who joins us with a special guest, Marriott CEO Arnie Sorensen. Seema. Arnie, a, a pleasure to have you on the show today. Thank you for joining us during what is a, an incredibly difficult time for the U.S. hotel industry. I want to start this conversation with you uh, addressing your employees. In the past week, you've announced a number of staff reductions, the furloughs of tens of thousands of employees. What steps are you taking to help these employees um, make ends meet and find other opportunity as unemployment is certainly set to rise here? Yeah, this has been a, obviously an extraordinary decline in our business the last um, couple of months, I suppose, if you look at where it started in China, but the way it's moved around the rest of the world and the way it's shown up here in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, breathtaking in its decline. You know, the, I sat around the table after 9-11 uh, in 2001, uh, of course, was at the company in 2008 and 9 when we went through the Great Recession, both times thinking that this was the worst we'd ever seen. And what we're seeing today is dramatically worse than what we saw in those two uh, prior uh, crises, the last two most recent ones. We're now seeing uh, revenue down 75% plus, uh, probably, I suspect, nearing a 90% decline in the United States. And obviously, at those levels, there just isn't any business in the hotels. And so the, the team that we've got of folks around the world, including in the United Sta States, have uh, no role to play, and there's no revenue coming into those hotels. So we have started by going out to um, communicate with them, to be transparent with them, uh, to work our tools and to work the policy tools in order to make sure that they can navigate through this uh, time, which is no fault of theirs, as well as possibly can be done. Uh, and so we focus on transparency, we focus on health care, we focus on a sort of a furlough approach as opposed to a termination approach, but doing one that allows our folks to be eligible for the, the uh, unemployment insurance and other tools that are out there. And of course, we've been advocating with the policymakers on the Hill and in the White House, let's make sure these tools are set up so that they're immediately available at uh, uh, probably more substantial support than is typically the case. Uh, and uh, let's adopt policies that allow us to take care of these people as we go. Arnie, do we still have you? I'm still here. Yeah, great. Well, actually, on that point, this time, last week, you were at the White House alongside other hotel CEOs where you, t together, asked for about $150 billion of financial relief for the hotel industry. If you're not able to get that from the White House, what happens to all those hotel workers? Well, I think there, there were two buckets we really talked about, and I, I raised with President Trump and I've raised with many folks on the Hill. One bucket is to make sure we're taking care of the employees, uh, and that's the most profound. Uh, and there it is about uh, all the tools that I've just mentioned, unemployment insurance, health care. We're trying to carry our uh, managed associates on health care even through this, uh, through this crisis. Uh, and uh, perhaps some direct distributions to folks and the like. The second is a set of provisions to make sure that the businesses that are within our network, within Marriott, also within the industry as a whole. And remember, we don't own the hotels that are in our system. They are owned by uh, separate real estate investors, often by separate operating companies. Think about family businesses that run a courtyard or a Fairfield or a Hilton Garden Inn or a Hyatt Place uh, to take some brands from some of our competitors. They tend to be locally focused. Uh, they've got mortgages. They've got uh, capital that they need to make sure that they can tap into to be able to survive this crisis and reopen. And when you talk about the $150 billion, we're really talking about uh, tools that might be available to both of those communities in order to support them as we go through it. And you talked about a 75% decline in revenue. The number of hotel closures continues to rise with record low occupancy across the U.S. Arnie, at what point do liquidity concerns um, start to become something that you pay a lot of attention to, the, the strength of your balance sheet here? Yeah, well, the uh, obviously, uh, Marriott is, is in one place. We've been in a solidly investment grade for a long, long time. Uh, at the same time, when revenue and therefore EBITDA disappears, uh, there will be pressure on our uh, debt to EBITDA ratios, and we'll have to make sure that we, we work our way through that. Uh, and we're doing that, of course. We will, we will make sure we take care of our own balance sheet. But more than that is really about making sure that this network of hotels, which is uh, you know, has hundreds of thousands of people engaged when you include the franchise uh, network uh, in uh, full-time employment, uh, we want to make sure that those uh, small businesses have got the resources they need in order to be able to open when demand comes back. Uh, now, the demand coming back is obviously a, a key piece in all of this. When states around the country are 
uh, telling people to stay home and not uh, gather, uh, that's obviously not good for our business in the short term. And so we've got to work our way through that. We've got to make sure we're taking care of uh, the health uh, needs that are the, the most fundamental needs. But when those uh, restrictions start to open up again, we want to make sure people are strong enough to reopen. Arnie, this is Morgan. To that point, how much of the canceled business we've seen, the vacancy rates, um, what's been lost, at least in the near term, is going to be recouped later versus just lost? Well, obviously, the, the uh, business that we had um, expected last night will never recur, right? Those rooms went down dark last night. Uh, if we think broadly about uh, three different kinds of business, uh, one is group business that would have been on the books. Uh, and has been canceled. Most of those group customers are rebooking later this year or rebooking into next year. We certainly believe that that group business, uh, when it's safe uh, to come back, will come back. And then you've got business, uh, individual business travelers and you've got individual leisure travelers, vacationers. And that business we think will come back as people get confident about the ability to safely go about living their lives in the case of vacations or doing their work in the case of business travel and would think that that will come back fairly quickly. That doesn't mean, for example, that 2021 will be what we would have expected 2021 to be before the coronavirus, but we would guess that 2021 is going to look a whole lot more like 2019 than it will look like uh, what the coronavirus leaves for 2020. Got it. And then in the meantime, are you or your franchisees having conversations? Will you, are you repurposing some of these properties uh, to help with the coronavirus efforts right now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, that, that started in the beginning with a few of our hotels in Wuhan, China, where we uh, quickly uh, housed um, uh, healthcare workers. Uh, we have a, a few hotels already in California that are uh, uh, serving duties like that. Uh, we've been in touch with uh, states and hospitals and the Red Cross and a number of different organizations to uh, make sure that we are doing what we can to be helpful uh, in a way that uh, obviously works for our folks. Now, there, there are complexities to uh, different uses. Uh, some of those uses really cannot coexist with a traditional hotel use, and so it's got to be one or the other. Uh, we've got to make sure that the folks that are working in these facilities are either uh, got the right kind of expertise or it's uh, the kind of roles that they've signed up to do uh, and we're working through all of those processes across the country. Arnie, let's talk China. Is there a recovery underway? On a call with investors last week you had said in certain provinces you've seen occupancy rise to around 20 percent. Since then has it has it increased further? Uh, it is. Uh, we are still encouraged. I think when you look across Asia Pacific, uh, China uh, mainland China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, South Korea, and Singapore are the five markets where you've got some signs that the transmission of the virus has been, the curve has been flattened, I suppose, to use the phrase that, that uh, increasingly is used across the world, uh, and that we're seeing uh, business activity begin to step back back up. Each of those five markets is a little bit different. I would, uh, Taiwan is probably in the 35% occupancy range. Uh, China is climbing out of the single digits towards the 20% range, and we're seeing a number of cities which are uh, building a factory capacity and starting to build uh, a bit of domestic travel. It is not about international travel at this point in time, and we'll continue to watch that as it goes forward, but there is there are some signs of encouragement there. And back here in the U.S., how reliant um, is occupancy here in the U.S. on the airlines returning to service? Well, it depends dramatically, obviously, on the market and the hotel. Uh, there are some um, uh, Midwestern markets, for example, which are going to be much more drive-to markets than air markets. Uh, but when you get to uh, the, the cities like New York and San Francisco or you get to some of the longer-haul uh, resort destinations, those are going to be more uh, drive-dependent. Of course, that depends, or more fly dependent, excuse me, which uh, uh, of course varies a little bit by time of year as well. As well. But until the airlines uh, come back, some of those markets will have a hard time getting back to the levels they were at before. So, Arnie, I know we were just talking about bailout prospects or relief uh, packages and, and what that can mean from the government side as we see the stimulus bill move through Congress, hopefully, today. Um, but could we see that type of situation happen within the private sector specifically as well as you have stock prices come off, as you have real estate values tumble? Could we see more consolidation or more deal making happening? 
Well, that's that's uh, certainly theoretically possible. I think on, on some level you could say, based on the market's reaction to this crisis, everything has been put on sale. But I think it also means that nobody would want to be a seller uh, in this market unless there somehow there's a desperation element there, or there is some view that their business will not come back. And you know, I think for most of us, uh, there is tremendous near-term uncertainty and tremendous pain that has to be shared uh, by by our group of associates and by other participants in the economy who are uh, getting walloped by this. But there is also a tremendous optimism that uh, before long, we're going to get out of this. Uh, and uh, it may take us a little while to get back to the kind of normal we were used to before. Uh, but we know that when the fear is behind us, uh, when we've made progress with the transmission of this virus, uh, which we will. Uh, people are going to get back and say, I'm going to live my life. I'm going to go back to work. I'm going to do the things I want to do. I'm going to take care of myself, of course, but uh, I'm going to be engaged in the things that I want to be engaged in. And, and we believe that that includes travel. Uh, and uh, so we'll get back there. And I think as a consequence, you won't see uh, the kind of um, what bargain basement deals, I suppose, that, that might have been the case even two or three crises ago. Um, I don't want to go on too long here, but if you go, if you go back to the savings and loan crisis in the early 90s, uh, in part because that uncertainty was not married with the kind of recovery that we knew came afterwards, the deals that were done in the depths of that crisis were the most attractive deals that were ever done. Uh, deals done after 9-11 and the, the uh, tech bubble burst in 2001, yes, there were some deals, but they were not as striking. You get to 2008 and 2009, relatively few deals done at the bottom of the crisis because people had the confidence that will come back. And so I think here, too, because there will be confidence that business will come back, there will not be the kind of desperate uh, uh, bottom of the market deals that uh, somebody might have dreamed of 30 years ago. Yeah, certainly the hospitality industry has gone through a number of crises, but when looking at your stock, Arnie, it's down about 50% so far this year. Why should Wall Street buy your stock, hold your stock, when it's still uncertain when demand will return and when occupancy will, will come back to uh, better levels? Well, of course, I'm not, a, I'm not a stock trader, and I'm not going to pretend to tell the uh, market the, the way they should go about doing this. Uh, but I do know that business will come back, and uh, the values will be much more like the values we had before than the values we had today. Uh, and uh, again, between now and then, I can't uh, tell you with any precision how the markets are going to navigate through that. But there will be smart players who get in and uh, have the capacity to ride this thing right back up to where it was before and then beyond. Lastly, how are you working with the federal government to, to convert some of uh, the closed Marriott properties into makeshift hospitals? You know, this nation right now is facing a shortage of beds for infected patients. Yeah, and, and that, uh, again, those are conversations we're having uh, more on the state level and with the uh, healthcare community directly. We do have some conversations underway with federal government about the way we can be helpful with uh, both our facilities, but also maybe helpful in making sure that we've got uh, hospitals that are getting the right kind of distribution of the, the uh, uh, patients who need care. And so we're working through all of those things. There are some things which are easier to do than others, of course. So to, to uh, uh, put healthcare workers in some of our facilities so that they can be close to the facilities where they're working, maybe not bring as much risk home to their uh, loved ones or family, is a bit easier than converting a hotel to a healthcare facility itself where patients are going to be taken care of, where you've got equipment needs and where you have an, uh, other needs which are a little bit more complicated. The staffing is also more difficult there, but we're working as quickly as we can with the folks who've got expertise in that area to do what we can to be helpful. All right. Arnie Sorensen, the CEO of Marriott, thank you for joining us, and Seema Modi, thank you as well. Uh, shares of Marriott are up 12% right now amid this broader market rally. Kelly, I'll send it back over to you. Yeah, great to